Right, looking at 21. Um, it's spending time watching television. Uh, how many people, how much time do you spend designing a questionnaire? Suitable question. Um, so what we want is how long? I want to put to the nearest hour. Do you spend watching TV? If you put a question mark there, you're getting no marks, I'm afraid. You have to put a time scale on it, so in a, in a day, in a week, in a month, in a week. So if you don't do that, it's very hard for a person to understand what the question is asking. Because obviously, if I think in a week, I'm going to say a lot longer if the question is, I think, asking me that, as opposed to in a day. Um, that's your one mark. Your second mark, then, is to put the response boxes in. So usually my rule is to put, put four in. Um, I'd have a, a none for no hours at all, um, one to two hours, three to four hours, or um, five hours plus. So we've then got all the values, and there's no overlapping boxes there, which is definitely in one block. Uh, you, you sometimes get that, that students put overlapping boxes in. Question 22. Ask 100 students if you like biology, chemistry, or physics best. Um, 38 students are go girls, uh, like biology, like physics, um, and chemistry. So what we've got, I prefer to do these questions where I, I know I've got clear. Um, I've got boys and girls, and I've also got, um, across the top, three different subjects. So what I would do here, I'm sorry for my appalling um, free sketch box, but you'll get the idea. Actually, you know what, I'm going to do this as best I can with um, straight lines to show a bit of quality because you know, we're expecting that from you guys as well. So here we go. Um, so we get a ruler and to grow, draw across and we want this, this to be um, big enough to take. It's a lot easier for you guys as well, by the way, with pencil and a ruler. But we want four going across. So what we're going to do in there is we're going to put boys and girls. We're also going to put a total column. And then we need four, five going across. So we've got biology, chemistry, and physics, and also a total column. So I've got bio, chem, and physics. And I've got a total column here. And we've got uh, boys and girls. We've got a total column here. And now what we're doing, 100 students, so we've got 100 students in total, so that goes down there. Um, 38 students are girls, so in total there are 38 girls. Uh, 21 of these girls like biology best, so biology 21. Um, 18 boys like physics best. And 7 out of 23 students who like physics, chemistry, so 23 students like chemistry, 7 of them are girls. So I'm going to change the colour now to sort of show you how you get your marks really. From now you're starting working out numbers. The question asks you for the number of students you like biology best. So biology, we're looking for this this part here. So first step, we could add these two numbers to 28. So that's got to be 10, because in total that's the number of girls. Adding down then gives us 28 here. And we could get straight away um, biology, but what I prefer to do is get that last, because you'll see why, because we can then test it. Um, seven girls like chemistry, so if we do seven off that, that's 16. So 16 boys plus seven, like 23 in total like chemistry. Um, I know there's got to be 62 boys asked, because this has to add to 100. Now if we add our 16 and 18 together, 14, so that's 34. So we've got to add up to 62. So if I do takes 34 off 62, Borrow 1 from your 6, so 12 take 4 is 8, 5 take 3 is 2, that's got to be 28. So then in total, what we're saying is 49 um, like biology. Now the reason I like doing the table and make sure that's last is because we can then check going across here. If I had 49, 23 
and 28, it should equal 100. So that's 17, that's 20. And 4, 2, 2 and 2 then gives you 10, which is 100. So you know that's right. And I just underline 49 for putting it in a box to make it very clear. That's the one that you're looking for. 23. Again, a lot of reading to get through on this. Mrs. Miller is planning a party for um, 70 children. So again, look what I do. I make little notes. I'm going, so 70 children. She'll give each children a party bag. So we're looking at a party bag for each of them. Uh, she'll put a hat and a toy in each party bag. Party bags are sold in packs of 12. We've got hats are sold in 8s and toys are sold in 9s. Mrs Miller buys the smallest possible number of packs of hats, toys and bags. Mrs Miller can fill more party bags than she needs. How many more? So she buys the smallest possible number of packs of hats, toys and bags. So if we need 70... We need one of each, don't we? So if we go in the party bags, first of all, so if we go down in our 12s, this is for P, so I'll just put party bags at the top. So we then get 72, so we 72 party bags there. Um, what we're then looking for um, is we then go down in hats. Now hats are in 8s, so it's 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, and then 72. So again, we've just gone over there. And then we're looking for uh, toys. So nine times table, 18. We're looking to go over 70, basically. 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, and then 72. So yeah, again, we've got um, past the point that we needed to. So we've got actually two more party bags. Um, so how many more? There's two more bags, as we can get 72 amounts for each of the ones. Question 24. So we've got a, a formula here. So for question 24, we have that V equals 3B plus 2B squared. So find the value of V when B equals minus 4. So what I would say is break this up. Uh, let's do the 3B first. So 3 lots of minus 4 gives you minus 12. Then we've got 2B squared. Now that means, because bid mass, bid mass saying that we do brackets, which there's no brackets, but indices, which are these powers. So we're actually going to do minus 4 squared. Now, minus 4 times minus 4, two minuses make a positive when we times in, so that'll give us 16. I think it gives us 32 overall. So now combine them, it's saying add them. So we're going to add, we're at minus 12, add in 32. So that one will give us 20 as our solution. Simplify the next one. Well, we've got a powers rule here. When we times in powers, what we do is add the little numbers together. So we've got M. 6 plus your 7, that will then give you m to the 13. So m to the 13 is what we're after. And then finally, question 25 for this section. Last year, um, Kerry, 25 there first. Last year, Kerry, um, take on pay was £15,000. She spent 40% uh, of her take-home pay was on rent. She used the rest to take-home pay for living expenses, clothes, and entertainment. How much she spent on entertainment? So the first step, 10%. You move all the numbers down one, so we get 1,500. So working out how much uh, her take-home pay was. So then there's 40%. If we times that by 4, that'll give us £6,000. So if I now do... Fifteen thousand pounds. Take off the six thousand, which gives us nine thousand. That's what she's got left. And then splitting it in the ratio of three to one to two. So three is for living expenses. Put L. Um, one is for clothes, and your two is for entertainment. 
So living, clothes and entertainment. Now £9,000 is what we've got left. Here's your set routine. We add up here, 3, 1 and 2. That gives you 6. We're going to divide then the total of the ratio, which is 6, into the money she's got to share. 6 into 9, go 1, carry you 3. 6 into 30, go 5. And then we've got two notes. So what that's saying to us is, one part is worth £1,500. So she'll spend £1,500 on clothes. She'll spend two parts, so double that, 3000 on his entertainment, and three times 4500 now your check, just to make sure you've done this right, is if you add your ratio up, what you should find is that adds up to the money that you had. So no, 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 five, five, no is ten, and four and one is five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine thousand. It has worked. And then it's what entertainment. So we go down the E. So then it's three thousand pounds.